Welcome back to the Game Addicts Podcast Show, where we talk about the modern and retro video games that we play and collect. I am this podcast player, one Brando, and I'm flying it solo today, all by my lonesomes. Of course, as we detailed last week, and then of course uh, on some episodes that have been pre-recorded and are to come, Mike is going through some health stuff right now. He's going to have some some surgeries up here in his sinus and areas, and get all that all that stuff kind of taken care of. So. In the meantime, I'm playing it solo. As I said, I got I think we got two shows in the bag that we pre recorded before we're getting closer to a surgery date. And we're gonna air those. But today I decided to come at you live. Uh because we got some pretty cool stuff to talk about. And uh man, I haven't done this in a while. I just kinda realized we're on episode one fifteen and you know, I used to do pickup videos over on the Journey to Comics YouTube channels. You know, I you know I'd get new games. You know, I'd be like, "Hey, I got this game. I got Heavy Rain," or you know, or whatever game. You know, I grew my gaming collection like over the years, and uh, those were over there on that channel. And I wanted to kind of like you know, you you know, come back to that because those pickup videos that were on that channel really is the genesis of this podcast. You know, me just cataloging my game, saying, hey, I got this game, here's the story behind it, here's why I like it, here's why I thought it was cool to pick it up. And then that morphed into the Game Medics podcast, and of course, then we started doing pickup, uh, like, segments on the show. And so I thought it'd be cool, because, you know, I really built my collection before the show really kind of went up and going, to kind of go back and look at some of the stuff, and we're going to be doing that today. We got two videos from that era the spring and summer of 2015, and then the fall winter. It's funny, I say in spring and summer, I'm done buying stuff, and then fall and winter, I bought stuff. <laughs> I kind of did that for about a year and a half. I kept saying, I'm not buying no more, and then it would just be like, yeah, here, I bought a game. Here's, you know, here's a little cheap. Oh, hey, look, it's bonus season. Um, you know, and the wife's like, here's, uh, you know, here's, here's some money. Go and have some fun. And I'm like, you know, I'm supposed to not be doing this. But I did. Anyway, guys, that's coming up. And, of course, we have some pretty cool news and everything kind of going on as well. But before we kick everything off, I definitely want to co- uh, go and give a shout-out to Tyler McLaughlin for Podcastry for pitching in and helping out last week. And, of course, also, everybody over there at Podcastry. I was over there on their show last week, and uh, I was on the air with uh, with our good friend Dick Blaintiner, the Blaining, or the Blaining. And, of course, Tyler, as we sat back, and we just talked about some old stuff, man. We we kicked back, we talked about some heritage, and we talked about some old school things. You know, uh, Tyler's really, really, really mad about the Butterfinger. We tried a new Coke, the the orange vanilla Coke. He had an episode of Coke's Blokes uh, over there on that day. It was a lot of fun. Go check out that episode that I was on. I believe the episode is called The Talons of Freedom. That was a really cool and fun episode that I did with them. So if you guys want to go check that out, please do it. Please go give them some love. They have their own Patreon now. Go and give those guys some love. I'm going to be partnering up with them and doing some more stuff with them in the future. I'm really, really proud of those guys. And they are just, man, they keep building and building and building on their on their base of what you know started as an idea of, of, of a fabric of conversation of Blaine, you know, Blaine's like, I really want to do this podcast, and and then it's it's kind of built and stacked, and that's and you know what, that's what all great things do, man. They just keep building and doing more stuff, just like we've done here. We started as a podcast on YouTube, and then we shift over to our own feed. Now we go live each and every single week, and we also stream some games and everything when we can and when we're able to. That being said, go check that stuff out. It's on the screen if you're if you're watching live the podcast. It's available. On all these great platforms, if we're not on your favorite podcast platform, please let us know. Check us out on the social media links below, right here on the Facebook, Twitters, and Instagrams at Game Addicts Play. And of course, twitch.tv slash Game Addicts Play is where we're at as well. As well as our Facebook page, we go live there as well. 
Now that that's out of the way, I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room. And that elephant, it's, it's, it's a pretty big elephant. Because it is the size of a worldwide global networking elephant. We're going to talk about the good old Google Stadia. Google Stadia was just announced uh, yesterday as I record this and as, I, as I'm live. It was on Tuesday. They announced this at GDC. And essentially, it is a new streaming platform. You know, So what is Google Stadia? Well, Google Stadia is going to be connected. You can hook up. It's going to be a service. You can get it on your, on your laptop, your desktop, uh, your phone, uh, your, your tablet, and, of course, your TV. And you're going to be able to play games and stream games. They claim that, you're, that their GPU that is dedicated for each stream is more than the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X combined. And they're, they're going to be, stream, they'd be able to stream to you 4K, 60 frames per second gaming. And simultaneously, you're going to be able to get that stream and download that stream. And you're going to be able to put, you know, sit there and play that. Meanwhile, you're going to be able to upload and stream yourself at 4K, 60 frames on YouTube. I tell you what, when I first kind of saw this, I didn't look into it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, of course, if you guys remember, Google kind of ran their uh, beta test with the web browser. You could play Assassin's Creed Odyssey in the web browser, right? So there was that whole test going on uh, with that. But then, you know, I had heard that everything kind of, you know, it, it, it worked. You know, you, you could do it. And, there, and then when they did the announcement, they showed, hey, this is a, a regular MacBook. You know, this is, for, you know, it runs perfectly fine because all the computing is done on their end, right? You know. But, you know, here are my arguments with a streaming service. Because it's the same because PlayStation and Xbox are also been kind of tipping their, you know, dipping their toe in that water as well. When you are setting this up, you have to think about, you know, internet users as a whole. Now, they were, they, they went to great lengths with the announcement of Stadia to say that the person with the worst connection can still enjoy this and, and, and it'll be fine because there's not as many places that the stream has to go. It's like all the stuff is held on their end, so it's like, you know, the stream goes, you know, to and fro, hopefully no entanglements. Well, the thing is, is that you have to think about a lot of people in the rural areas. Like, back where I grew up in my hometown, like, we're not going to be able to get stuff like this. <laughs> I guarantee you. We have like 600 people in that town, maybe less now. Maybe we could, but, you know, I remember it was a big deal in, like, 2003 or whenever it was when we got cable internet, and it, it, the fastest available was three megabytes or megabits a second. We were like, oh, this is so fast. This is awesome cable internet. And uh, I currently have cable internet through Comcast, and I don't want to get this if I have Comcast. Comcast is really unreliable. I have had great amount of luck streaming ever since I've got my own dedicated streaming laptop. Back when I was streaming through the console, it wasn't that great. It, that could have been a mixture of both. But with the laptop, it's been mostly, you know, well, I need to make sure I'm on the right side of the screen. You know, it's been mostly good. And I just saw a sign as we were coming home today uh, that said AT&T Fiber. And I'm I'm not a guy. I don't really like AT AT and T. They screwed me over in the past on the phone bill. Quite literally, this was the interaction I had with AT and T. AT and T was like, hmm, here's a uh, extra charge in your bill. So you so you look at that and you're like, well, I haven't bought anything. I didn't buy any apps. Hey, hey, um, what's that charge on that? Oh, that's just an extra charge. That's a one time charge. What's it for? They could never tell me. The next bill, I had another one-time charge. Next bill, another one-time charge. They were siphoning money out of me with these one-time charges. Probably, there was probably some sort of class action lawsuit that I probably could have went and gotten done. However, I left them and went to somebody else. AT&T Fiber, I looked into it. It's not available yet in my address. It's like a block down. <laughs> it's available over there, I guess. I'll look into it. I, I'm hesitant because it's AT and T, but it's a you know it's a different company than it was back when I had AT and T ten years ago. So, who knows? But if I had a good Google, or, or I'm sorry, not Google Fiber, we don't have Google Fiber here. Come on now, uh, they need to work on that if they want to make this a big thing. They need to try and spread you know Google Fiber as many places and big cities as they can. But 
if I get fiber internet, this might be something that may be really cool you know, to look into. And they're saying you can use any USB controller you currently have that would work with your whatever, right? Uh, but, of course, they're going to sell their own controller. And I don't like the D-pad that thing. Look at that thing. That D-pad's horrible. I, ha I haven't even touched it, and I can tell you it's going to be horrible. Uh, it does have triggers. And so it's got that going for it. The, 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 the first thing that I thought of when I saw this controller... It's not quite as bad, but you guys remember the Ouya controller? Yeah. Ugh. Ouya. However, uh, so they said at launch you're going to be able to do 4K at 60 frames, stream to your house. You're going to be able to play it on your TV, on your phone, on your, on your, I, mean, I don't know whose phone can do 4K. Maybe they have some phones that can do that. I think mine does like 1440p, uh, but. There's, you know, they're saying, hey, we figured it out, and it's going to be available at launch at 4K. Well, it, they're saying that in the future we're going to be capable of 8K. Cool. Uh, and they also are saying that you, what, say you're watching a dude, say you're watching somebody stream their game on YouTube from Stadia, and you can click on that right from there just to launch it. You can also join their game if they're playing like an online game. You can join it with one click and be right up, and and, and it works in any it works in a browser, it works on your phone, it works on your TV. This is a really cool idea, and of course, the future is going to this. The future is going to go to the streaming platforms. But with the other guys, with Sony and Xbox, they seem to be more like let's gonna let's work on this. There's going to be a huge dedicated people who still want to have their their physical media or digital media. And we're gonna, you know, still supply that for them while still building up the new business model that is the streaming model. And of course, Google's pretty much jumping right into the deep end. They're cannonballing right off that high dive, saying we're going all the way in. That's not a bad idea per se, but I like the way that the other guys are like, you know, I mean, I'm a collector. I collect physical games, and I do know there's a lot of people who like do that as well. So. On one hand, I know that if I want to keep playing my games, if I want to keep growing with the gaming community, this is going to be something that it's going to happen as I pick off little pieces of fuzz off my microphone. There we go. It was bugging me. But I'm going to drag my feet, and I'm going to kick and scream the entire way. I'm a dude who loves to collect my games. I love to have them on the shelf. I love the stories they have. You know, There are some games I have just to have them. It's like tattoos. You know, a lot of people, you know, the, you know it's funny. I, I hear this a lot. Though the first couple have a lot of meaning, and then after that, they just mean nothing. But for a lot of people, you know, it's artwork for them. You know, these are these are works of art. You know, you know, I want to be able to be able to plug in my game and not, you know, plug it. You know, the old games. Put a cartridge in, turn it on. Whoop, it, there's no uploading. There's no installing. You're ready to go. I love that era of gaming for that. This is the future. Uh, Phil Spencer. Apparently, wrote in an, an internal um, <laughs> Dick Blaine Tyner. He attests tattoos. Yes. So, uh, Phil Spencer did, uh, he replied in a, it's an internal email. Basically, he's, he feels vindicated by, by Google Stadia's uh, announcement by saying that we're on the right track. You know, they went out big today, and we're going to go big at E3. So, it's pretty much assumed that Xbox's E3 is going to be a very big showing, a very big, and also uh, probably heavily centered around the new hardware and their new streaming platform. And here's what we can do, and we're going to be better than them. You know, basically, you know, Stadia is going to be a competitor to Xbox. I know that Spencer wants Xbox to be synonymous with gaming. Google coming out right here at GDC, putting you know, as I said, they didn't dip their toe in the water; they jumped right in. Uh, they have no. Uh, real big, like I didn't, I didn't hear about any real big third party announcements for stuff coming to this yet. Of course, we saw stuff, um, stuff along along the lines of uh, what you call it, um, NBA Two K and stuff like that. I do assume there's going to be a lot of third party people interested in having another platform to put your games on. And uh, good old Dick Blaine Tyner, hey, no problem for the Patreon plug, dude. Of course, anything to help out my buddies. Anyway. Uh, go check out the Journey to Comics Patreon, too, if you get a chance. I believe they still have one, yeah? So, what? So what is the... 
the aftermath of, of this. I'm, tr- man, I'm, I'm looking at myself, and it's like I'm in a mirror. You know, I need to. I'm not used to just being by myself on that, like on the stream. I did a couple of uh, things that were called Game Addicts Pluses back when, but it was more chill, more relaxed. And yeah, I need to get back into doing stuff like that. But what is the aftermath of this? We are going. To, I, I'm in the seat of wait and see. I want to see more. I want to see if they're going to be at E3 or in 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 and around any of these other gaming conventions or, or going forward with more announcements. I want to hear more. The controller, apparently, this is something that I forgot to say. The, the, the controller will be directly connected with Wi-Fi to the Google uh, Gaming Center to reduce lag. So there's going to be a Wi-Fi transmitter into the controller. That is gonna. It, it, that's interesting. That's different. Also, you can also there's a microphone on, on the controller, and you can access Google Help. <laughs> so, and they showcased it where you know some dude was playing Tomb Raider. It's like, you know, Google Help, and they're like, "How may I assist you? How do I beat this tomb?" And it's gonna see where you're at, what you're doing, and either find you the video or find you the the, the solution. It's interesting that, and then also they're saying that anything you see on your on your phone on your browser, if you have the app. It's going to pop up, and you're going to be able to launch the game or launch the app. Any sort of link for an advertisement can turn into a an, a launching thing for Stadia. This thing's very ambitious. Uh, it was more ambitious even than what I had thought before I even looked into it, before I watched their thing. Who knows? This thing could really revolutionize gaming, but it could. I, I remember OnLive. You guys remember OnLive? It was basically this, but like five years ago. And it wasn't ready for it yet. You know, do you guys remember when Sony decided to release an all digital handheld? It's called the PSP Go, and it flopped on its ass. That's because number one, the PSP, while being a great system, and sold like eighty million units, uh, just didn't have the user base for an all digital platform. The other thing is, as consumers generally, we weren't ready for it yet. That was like way back in two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So. Not ready yet. Too soon. Is this too soon? We will see. We will see. Uh, I'm still on the fence with it. I'm interested. But I'm on the fence interested instead of on the fence doubtful. If I question whether or not they're going to be able to do what they promise as reliable as they promised. So that's pretty much all I have to say on that uh, going forward uh, for now. But as I did say... Uh, previously, we are going to be looking at some old gaming pickup videos from the good old days of 2015. As I said, I grew my gaming collection over the years. I pretty much kind of stopped buying games. If you've been paying attention to the podcast, I haven't had that, that many pickups. I do have one singular pickup for today, which I will share. Uh, oh, now Blaine's flip flopping over. Thank you for tuning in, Blaine. And of course, uh, Another shout out to the great podcast of your podcast as well. Blaine, uh, quick question. Are you doing a certain show this week? Is it air, is it premiering this week? Or where did it premiere last week? I don't know. <laughs> Blaine, thanks for doing me the solid, man. Yes. The G O C uh uh K C Are you is that is that happening yet? Because I will plug it if it is. Before I continue on with the show. Okay, he did not record uh, the last week, but they're going to try it again this week. Basically, guys, over on the podcast feed, they're doing a Game of Thrones show, which is going to be centered around, of course, this last season of Game of Thrones that's coming up, which is super hyped. And uh, that is going to be streamed live on their feed. And yes, I will join in when and where I can. The, you know, just depending. It, it, it all just depends. Uh, Nate, thanks for dropping in. Uh, Nate Phillips, of course, JIC, Journey into Comics. Thank you for dropping in on the show. Uh, right as soon as we're about ready to take a little break and go back into the time machine, go back into to 2015 as we look back on some of these old pickup videos that I have. And uh, uh, we have two of them. There's going to be the first one, Spring Summer 2015, and then there's going to be a bit of a break where I have another news thing and my pickup, and then, of course, the last one for the for the you know for the day. I wish there was more that I could do, but you know, I mean, I'm flying solo, man. I'm flying all by myself, and there's really not a lot of news other than the Google thing. I mean, the Google thing took up the most of probably the first half of the show. So, without any further ado, let's head on over and check out Brando from spring 
summer 2015. What's up guys, Brando back here again for the first time in a very long time with a pickup video. I think it's been since like uh, April that I filmed one for like March or whatever. But I did slow down buying games and it's just now that I have enough games to kind of fill up a video to sort of talk about it at length. So I'm just gonna get started. Uh, back in April, I went up and hung out with Nate a little bit up in his neck of the woods. And of course, you know, he's like, hey, you wanna hit up our disc replay? And I'm like, of course. So. I picked up Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Dawn of Souls on the Game Boy Advance and then I picked up Splatterhouse on the 360. Now Splatterhouse is really interesting because this is like a remake of an old game on like the Turbo Graphics and I think Splatterhouse 2 and 3 were on the Genesis and I believe you can get those versions on here along with the original arcade version but really gory, very really heavy metal. Really, like the main character kind of reminds you of Jason or something like that. But this next one here, this 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 one's actually like a holdout. This is like really late March. I actually forgot to include it in the video for March. But this is Castlevania Circle of the Moon on the Game Boy Advance. And my buddy Mike picked this up for me. And thanks, Mike. And uh, it's I am finally getting to it to talk about it in the video so I can finally put it up. The next run of games are all games that I got from a, one of my favorite stores locally, Disc Replay. Really good prices. Most of these were on the super cheap. So I'm just going to sort of go down them pretty quickly. The first one is uh, Grand Theft Auto Episodes of Liberty City. Now, I actually have both of these, but I remember when uh, I picked up the first one, the uh, Lost and the Damned. It was exclusive to the 360, and so I, I had a 360, so I bought it just to play it. And then I ended up picking up the Ballad of Big Tony on the PS3 because that's where I had the actual core game. So I picked this up because anytime that I see any like sort of like digital or like DLC stuff that comes out in physical disc, I want to own it. So here's this. I added that only a few dollars. Uh, same thing, only a few bucks. Infamous 2. So now I have all of the Infamous games that they put out, except for the DLC one, which was only available on disc. I do believe in the states when it was with the. Uh, like the two-in-one, but I'm already sort of past that. I'm not gonna trade these in to get that. I did get the DLC on like flash sale or something for a few bucks. Um, the next one here is Alan Wake for the 360. I like you know Remedy stuff. I like the Max Payne stuff, and I've been just waiting to get this. It just, just sort of just kind of came and at the right price at the right time. Speaking of right price, Dark Siders 2. <laughs> I've never played any of these, but I saw this for $2. I could not say no. And I actually had to do a double take because, I mean, it says not packaged for individual resale, so it had to have come in sort of like a box set of some sort. But I just couldn't figure out if this was actually the full game or a demo because I looked on the inside and it says uh, the Crucible Pass. And I didn't know if that was anything or because, the, you know, this was made by THQ or put out by THQ and they're long since gone. But to unlock the full experience. I didn't know if this was like some weird promotion they had going on, but it looks like it's the full game. I put it in, tried it out. The next one here is one that has been on my radar for a while. It's always sort of around the $30 range, and I happen to just catch it at a good price, and that is Tales of Asperia. I'm a huge RPG fan, and anytime that I see anything sort of exclusive, I try to grab it, especially RPGs for the 360, because you just don't see a whole lot of Japanese RPGs that are exclusive to the 360, and stuff like this is, is a, like a title that they put up to try to entice the Japanese gamers to sort of get on board with the 360 in Japan, and it never really worked. I mean, I have the uh, with Lost Odyssey and um, Blue Dragon and stuff like that, I have that already, and so it's really cool to get this one because I like the Tales series and I want to get more of them, but you know, RPG titles have a tendency to keep their value longer than some other titles, so when those uh, like other Tales games for the PS3 kind of go down a little bit more, that's when I'll be picking those up. Um, the last two here are for the Xbox. The first one is Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance. This is getting a little bit on the expensive side. I want to say I picked this up for about $12 or something. Um, but a little bit more than what I was wanting to pay for it, but it's starting to climb, and especially the second one. The second one is the one is really climbing up, and I think I saw it for up in the 20s or something like that. But if you like your uh, over the you know over the head sort of pack and slash uh, team up games, like you can team up with your buds and just go around and just beat beat the crap out of stuff, check this out. I think this is also on the PS2, and it might also be on the GameCube, but I am not sure. The last one is a platformer, fun platformer, Doctor Mudo. This was super cheap, guys. A couple bucks, and that was it. And it, this is just sort of a little, like, 
niche title. It may have come out on the PS2 also, but it just, it's just weird and quirky, and I just like games like that. So I had to pick that up, especially only for a few bucks. The next couple here I got on another trip to that store. I got the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Genesis. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually love playing the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the, on the Super Nintendo. Well, I had no idea that this was an entirely different game. This is more like a fighting game. And so I sat down and played this and tested it out, and I was really surprised to see this was not the same game. Now, I do know that the, the Power Rangers, the movie game on Genesis, is also on there, and I think that is the same you know, across the two games. Because I actually love the Super Nintendo version. I'm like, oh, Genesis version. Okay, I'll just grab it for that. You know, whatever. Now I gotta go get the one for Super Nintendo because they're two different games. And I had no idea. I got, I should have done my homework. This next one, I had the box. I don't know if you remember in a pickup video I did a long time ago, but I got, I came out of work one day and there was an N64 box sitting there with a whole bunch of Super Nintendo boxes. And this was in there, Buster Bust Loose, Tiny Toons. And I happened to get the cart for like four bucks. So I completed my set, and now this is sort of a weird one, but the box is in such good condition. I wish my Chrono Trigger box was, was in this good a shape, but pretty cool to get this complete. Uh, I'm not going for a complete collection for Super Nintendo, it's just I happened to see it and was like, I remember playing that from a kid. I would have bought it anyway, but having it in the box is just a plus. This next one, uh, NES Double Dragon 3. Now, I have the other two that I got from various NES deals that I did. So, I found this, and it's not very good. I prefer, uh, I believe it's the first one. <laughs> it's the only one I really like, but I had to get it because it was pretty cheap, and I wanted to complete it. So, there's Double Dragon 3. These next two I picked up from Game Exchange. Now, I don't know if it's everywhere, but my two local game exchanges around here changed their name to, like, uh, gaming HQ. So if anybody else lives near a game exchange and they've changed their name, please let me know because that may have just been like our two around here that changed. They may, maybe they separated, they're no longer affiliated, but I picked up Zelda The Wind Waker on the GameCube and Zelda Skyward Sword. So I have Wind Waker for Wii U, but uh, I just, I always wanted to sort of pick up the GameCube version. And I never played, nor I never owned Skyward Sword. And Skyward Sword, unfortunately this is, it says it's the one that comes with the music disc. But there, there's no music disc. And there's no manual, if there was a manual. It is what it is. I came across this when I first started collecting, and then I hadn't seen it until I saw it this time. And I wanted to pick it up. I had the money to pick it up, so I went ahead and bought it. Same with this. I threw this in there. And funny story about this. I was in the store. I'm just looking around. You know, I, I, I see these. I also see a few other things that are, that are catching my eye. Things that are I would just be paying too much money for. But, you know, when you have the money and you see something you want, it's hard to say no. So, I went by these, I saw these, and I walked over, and then I walked away, I walked a little bit down, and then I was trying to debate whether I wanted to buy these or put it towards something a little bit more expensive, a little bit more rare, and I heard this this teenager, this kid, we were preteen, I heard this kid uh, say his mom, look, Zelda games, those are awesome. She goes, oh yeah, and I went, Excuse me, can you help me get some games out? And I totally, if he was going to get these, kid, I apologize. But I totally sniped them because I wanted them and it's, I'm sorry if I sniped you, kid. Uh, but I had to own the Zelda games because I want to complete my Zeldas. Um, I actually had a case for Wind Waker. Uh, my buddy Tony, back when I had a GameCube, he gave me, he ended up giving me the case for Wind Waker and it had a, a a copy of Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 1, Disc 2. So that was really weird. But I think the the version of this game I bought had like the bestseller sticker, but I had the original non-bestseller case already, so I just put it in there. Neither one of these have manuals. Uh, that's unfortunate, but such is life. Whatever. I have the games. That's what matters. These next three Wii games I actually bought with Nate when Nate was uh, he came down for my. I believe it was the baby shower that he came down for, for my son. And we, we hung out and whatnot, and then we went into town, went to Disc Replay, and I picked up Sonic Colors, I picked up Super Mario Galaxy, and then I picked up The Blob. Now, this is a pretty neat little quirky game. It's not much to say about here, it's just fun. Uh, Sonic Colors, I always wanted to own Sonic Colors, 
but it, again, I'm cheap and I try to get stuff as cheap as I can. Saw it for pretty cheap, picked it up finally. Super Mario Galaxy is one I want to talk about though because this is a game that I always wanted to play, but I never really got a chance to play. And they had two versions. They had the Player's, the player's Choice. I haven't said Player's Choice, but it's uh, Nintendo Selects, I guess, for the, for the Wii. It's almost just like their greatest hits, like for, for PlayStation or for Platinum Hits for Xbox. The non-Platinum Hits, <laughs> greatest hits version of this, the non one was going for like 20 something dollars and this was going for 12 and I just could not believe that there was that much of a price difference. Now I know there are some collectors who just want to have the original non altered box or anything like that. For me, I want the game, it's what I care about the most and I want to get it as cheap as I can too so I had to just go with this, I don't care, I mean it's the same game, it's the same game with a little bit of extra you know, ribbon on it, you know, hey, this is this old a lot, so we're gonna put this on it. it. It doesn't bug me that much, and it saves me some bucks, you know, so, uh, I don't know if that's a thing where they're charging uh, less for that, because I honestly was just not unsure, and I probably could have went up and asked them, but I just picked it up, it was nothing to really, you know, worry about for me. But moving on, uh, well, I did an unboxing on this, it's Batman Arkham Knight. Yeah, I'll put the unboxing down below if you want to see that. The This game was interesting. I liked it a lot, but I was also a little disappointed with some of the boss fights. Pretty much there hardly are any. You're pretty much in the Batmobile the whole time for the boss fights. There's only one or two actual boss fights. I really liked the story. Some people didn't like sort of the twist at the end or the, the identity of the Arkham Knight, which I won't spoil here. I didn't mind it, I, honestly. I, it's just their version of it. I like the Arkham universe. This was, I would not say that this is my favorite in this series. I probably would still go to Arkham City, but there's not a bad game in the series. There really isn't, unless you're not a fan of the uh, uh, the Blackgate, the mobile game, the, the Vita game. And I have it on Vita. I think it's on DS. But if you're not like that, sort of the 2.5 D, you might not like that, but. In the actual core console games, there's not a bad game. These next uh, games are all games I got from Goodwill over the course of July, I do believe. July and I think there was a couple of, of uh, August in here. First of all, Test Drive Off-Road. Now all of these games cost three bucks a piece and now that's my Goodwill. Some Goodwills charge like five, which is too much, especially for like you know, for like some of these games here, but $3, I feel like I can pretty much, they're either right on the money or a little under what these games go for. So Test Drive, Off-Road, PS1, I got the original Rock Band. So many memories playing the original Rock Band. That's pretty much the reason why I bought this is memories, because I, I, honestly, you, you could buy Rock Band 2 or 3 and have all the other ones if you, because I still have them, because Rob owned this. Uh, he owned it back in the day, and we just, I just borrowed his, but... Had to get it because three bucks, memories. Um, ATV Off-Road Fury 3, I got one and two, so I got the third one. That's pretty much the end of that one. Tekken Tag Tournament, awesome game. Only ever played it in passing when it first came out. I like Tekken, so a couple bucks, picked that up. Final Fantasy X 2, not the best Final Fantasy out there, but um, funny story is is that a copy of this was donated to me so I never actually paid for it before and I found this there at Goodwill with manual and the disc is actually in slightly better shape so for three bucks I said okay I'll do that and this last one on the original Xbox secret weapons over Normandy I pretty much went what is that and then I picked it up it at first, it sort of looked like kind of like a budget title, you know what I mean? And I don't know if it if it really is or not, but it's published by LucasArts. And I flipped it over on the back, and it said, From the critically acclaimed creator of TIE Fighter and the X-Wing series. And I'm like, sold. Because <laughs> those games were awesome. Now, there's actually, like, content to download, the uh, DLC, uh, on the original Xbox. And they sort of kind of started that, but uh, you can't get it now because the original Xbox doesn't have Xbox Live. I hope we, hopefully, it's just, like, extra missions or whatnot. Nothing too important there, but moving on here, uh, I went to the Gaming HQ, former Game Exchange, and Kokomo, 
we were in that area and I went there in search of this. This is the Super Game Boy. I wanted one because I, instead of buying a Game Boy player for the GameCube, which I couldn't find at the time, I ended up buying this, uh, the Super Retro Advance Adapter. Now, this plays uh, Game Boy Advance games, but not regular Game Boy games. At the time, I didn't care, such as me. I got a good deal on it because it was a Cyber Monday deal. So now I want to play Game Boy games on my TV. Can't do it unless I buy the Game Boy Player for the GameCube, which is like $30 to $50 depending on where you go. Or I just picked this up for like 10 bucks. So for this and this, it was like $30. So the price of a Game Boy Advance Player for the GameCube. You, whatever. The, uh, they, they both play on the Super Nintendo. This one uses an AV, its own AV out, so you need that. This one, just you just plug it in and play. It's no big to me. Uh, it is what it is, and I'm really excited to own one of these because I never had one, so lucky to have one now. When I was also there, I found a working designs game. Not one of the higher rated ones, but Gun Griffin Blaze. I'm a huge sucker for anything uh, worky designs, and this was like super freaking cheap. So I went ahead and just grabbed it while I was in there. So these next few here are just ones that I bought over the weekend that I'm filming this. And I picked up Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance on the Xbox for $2. I already own this for the PS2, but for $2 I couldn't say no. I tried it out by the way, and the controls are whack. They're just, they're so messed up. So you aim with the X button, right? So you're, the old MGS, it's not like the triggers. It's not how you aim and shoot. You hold the button and then you move it around and then you shoot. To go first person, you click the left stick instead of hitting like, I think it's a one or something like that. That's weird. That's so weird to me. I tried getting used to it and I just, it was, it wasn't that bad, but it's, I kept trying to hit the trigger and I kept opening up the menu. And this one I got, finally got, MGS5 Ground Zeroes. Now, I didn't buy this when it came out simply because I didn't feel like paying full price for this. Because this is so short. This is pretty much like the first chapter of MGS5. Kind of what, kind of like, like the way the Tinker chapter was for Substance or for uh, Sons of Liberty. This is, this is what this is. It's like a prologue. And they put it out in, like, I think it was like $30. Rob bought it, I borrowed it from him, and I played it. Beat it in like, I sit there and beat it in like 45 minutes to an hour. It is what it was, and I gave it back to him. Now that Phantom Pain is here, and I'll be doing an unboxing of that when I get it, I wanted to have this to go along with it, so I went and picked it up. Not terribly expensive, it's about, I think it's probably about 12 to 15 bucks. This last one was freaking awesome because you see, I go to a lot of stores and I buy stuff, and I always try to find it, you know, sometimes the stores don't have it at its going price, so I'll mark it down a little bit. Uh, so, this was like, not at the greatest deal, because I think it goes for like 35 to $40, but for 25 bucks, I picked up Final Fantasy 2. Now, there's a reason why I pretty much just said, you know what, I'm going to buy this now, because if I don't, I'm going to regret it. And that's because I came across this a couple times, passed on it, and then I never see it. It's like, when I have the money, I never see it. When I don't have the money, I'll say, ah, I'll just get it cheaper some other time. Such is the gaming collecting life. So, I have every other version of Final Fantasy 2, or aka Final Fantasy 4. So this is the last one. Now I have it and that collection is complete other than getting this a box and manual. As I said before, I don't really care about getting a full SNES box manual set, but for the Final Fantasies and other key titles, I'll definitely check it out and see if I can't get it on the cheap or, you know, maybe I'll check it out on eBay. You might get a good deal on there, maybe, but I wouldn't say no. So Final Fantasy 2, love this game. All right, I am back and Man, video's longer than I remembered. But I had a lot of pickups, dude. I had a lot of pickups. And, uh, yeah, I had I, I have another video coming at you here in just a few mementos. But I got some more news. I got some more news. And uh, really, 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 really quick here. Uh, there's this uh, really cool game that came out on the Xbox and on the PC that just got announced. 
It's coming to the Switch. It's called Cuphead. Of course, this was a former Xbox or Microsoft exclusive. And, of course, uh, they have now partnered up with Nintendo to get the game over there. It's coming out in April. I think it's April, was it, 16th? Make sure I'm double-checking myself here. Do, 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 do. April 18th. April 18th, it'll be heading your way uh, for that. Mm, Mentos, <laughs> the fresh maker, says the good old podcast. Yes, so Cuphead. I've heard pray tell of rumors that stuff like this was going to happen, that you know we were going to start seeing some, some Xbox stuff come over. Uh, to the Switch, and of course, uh, there you know, there's that rumor about Game Pass. Apparently, that's not happening like we thought it was, but it may still happen in the future. Then there's the idea of that they want all of their stuff, man. Uh, of course, they want their streaming service just like the Stadia. They want that everywhere that they can get it, and the and the Switch would be a great platform because you can take it anywhere. And if they can get their Halos or Gears or Forzas running over there, uh, that would be awesome. Of course, I really think that. Of course, this uh, Cuphead is probably just them dipping the toe in the water. But the other thing, the other news thing that I heard of was the formation of something called Lucasfilm Games. Apparently, this is on the rumor mill, and this may actually be confirmed by now. I'm not sure. But uh, Disney has launched Lucasfilm Games. Of course, if you remember, LucasArts was the old name. I mentioned them in that video that I was just talking about with, Se- with Secret Weapons Over Normandy. But apparently... Uh, this division will be, you know, overseeing the Star Wars uh, and, pro- and possibly other franchises in video games formats such as consoles, PC, VR, AR, all that kind of stuff, right? What does that mean for EA? EA has had the license for about six years now. We have seen two games come to fruition from that: Battle Battlefront and Battlefront Two. Both games not really what they promised. Of course, we had that big debacle. With Battlefront 2 and all of those loot boxes. It made a lot of people mad. But there's been a lot of games that were started, stopped, delayed, canceled. You name it, it happened. With a lot of different titles, including um, that one game. I can't I don't remember if it had a game or had a name, but Amy Hennig of Uncharted Fame was making a, a an action game. That's canceled. There was another one uh, that got canceled. We have Fallen Order that's coming out this year, apparently. Cross your fingers. But what does that mean for EA? You know, uh, I think it was Bob Iger. Is he the guy and like the head of uh, head of Disney? He has mentioned uh, that there. He basically like when they asked about it, he's like, "Yeah, there's no plans." Pretty much, and people lost faith. You know, it was like, "Oh no, what are we gonna do? We gotta get Star Wars away from EA." And he's like, "Ah, we don't care. It's it's there." Uh, apparently, they do care because this is now apparently happening. And what does that mean? Are they going to get it back? Are we going to get some awesome Star Wars games again? Because back in the day, back when LucasArts actually was a thing, and in the same span of time of six years, I saw this post going around the internet where, and it's it's something that you don't stop and think about. There were so many different teams, so many different devs working on different Star Wars material where they had so many different Star Wars properties. And these, you had like a slew of games, Lego Star Wars, the, uh, the, the Force Unleashed, just to name a few. Those all came out. And, of course, the old Battlefronts, you know, the good Battlefronts, you know. Uh, Battlefront 1 and 2 from, you know, the original Xbox and PS2 days, those games. And then, of course, you had the Rogue Squadron games. If anybody remembers those, those were awesome. You know, Pod Racer. Remember Pod Racer? You know? And and then, of course, the second one. They had a second one that was on PS2 from the uh, ATV Off-Road Fury devs. But, you know, a lot of awesome games come out from the Star Wars uh, franchise. And now you've had that label put under EA, and you've had two games over the last two years, or six years, I'm sorry, and they have not lived up to what they should be. And they've just been two first-person shooter games. Then, you know, oh, well, battle, Battlefront, you know, you're going to fly some X-Wings and some TIE Fighters and go do some stuff. But that first one, I played the beta for it, and I was not impressed. And, I mean, the second one, you can get it for under 10 bucks, even less. I really do hope that this is a sign that they're taking the, the license away from EA. and it is, it, Because it's obvious that EA had no interest in giving BioWare what we wanted. BioWare is like, hey, you know, Kotar 3, here's an idea we have. And EA is like, no, make more big looter shooters. So that's what we got with Anthem. 
a little bit of a noteworthy thing here. I, I thought that was pretty neat to. I just saw that uh, while actually while we were watching the pickup video. And as I mentioned earlier, I have one singular pickup for this episode here today. And uh, I have been in a really big Resident Evil kick since the release of the remake of Resident Evil 2. It's awesome. I can't stop playing it. I've gone through it. This is going to be my fourth time going through it. Uh, I'm, uh, I've am i done A scenario with both, and now I'm doing the B scenario. I'm, uh, I'm about uh, almost more than halfway, I would say, uh, done with it. And I definitely want to try and beat it on hardcore. I can't. Or at least beat it on hardcore with an S+. I've actually got it to a point where I can get... Uh, I might have said it last week on the show, but I got all the way to the first boss fight within uh, 20, 25 minutes. So it's like, bam, 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 bam. I'm in there. I'm going. I'm, I'm rolling. I'm you know, not shooting everything. I'm, I'm leaving certain stuff. I'm not picking up certain things because it's, you know, learn what to pick up, where to go. Yeah, know when to pick stuff up. That that's another thing is like to save you time. Maybe you don't pick it up right now. Maybe you save that spot for something else, and you can come back later and pick it up if you're going to be there later. So, be that as it may, I have been working to stream the Resident Evil series on this channel. I want to stream it. I want to stream it as much as I can. I'm in a big kick on it, and I want to keep going with it as much as I can. And hopefully, I, I can stream maybe this weekend. I'll, you know, I'll get some time. Uh, maybe, and we will see, because I can be, make sure whether or not to share this in the right spot. But I actually, I, I'm going to give you guys, if you're watching this live, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek of the overlay that I have created for the Resident Evil series. And of course, uh, the webcam is not showing up for whatever reason, but be that as it may, here's what I have for it so far. Um, yeah, it looks like a... You know, your inventory in Resident Evil. And, of course, I've got the game controller. I've got a CBD vape. I've got Monster. I've got a burger and a taco uh, for my healing items. Uh, and then, of course, I've got our logo and the Resident Evil logo and some of the social media stuff. I'm still working on it. It's still a work in progress for the most part. But, most you know, and the game's going to go in that big blink space. But, yeah, guys, that's going to be happening. And, well, in order to fully realize, uh, I need to get, uh, you know, um, as many Resident Evil games streamable because I don't have a good converter. I, I I have converter options where I can do like a PS2 or GameCube to you know HDMI, but it stretches the image and I don't want that, man. You know those old game systems they are set to you know four by three aspect ratio for the most part, right? Some games do support widescreen, but even when you have it set to widescreen, it just looks horrible. So. I've been on the march, and of course, on the on the last episode, I had some, or maybe this episode before that, I had some, you know, I bought Resident Evil 5, 6, Revelations 1, Revelations 2, I went through, and today, I added 4. 4 on the Xbox One. Why the Xbox One? Because it's the one they had, uh, and I don't really feel like paying any more than what I paid for it. I think I paid like 15 bucks for it, and that's how much I'm going to spend. I don't, uh, it's a game I already own. It's an awesome game. Don't get me wrong. I love Resident Evil 4. But it also set the series on a trajectory of it not being so, you know, what it, what it was. I almost said scary, but I'm not sure if they've ever really been scary. They've been tense, but... And this, if 4 kept the tense, you know. The, it 4 kept the tension, but 5 removed it when you had, like, another player with you. And you're just like, oh, let me just boom, shoot you, boom, shoot you. And some people liked it, some people didn't. I didn't. And 2 brought that tension back for sure. But, you know, 4 will be streamable. I have the original. I have original PlayStation versions of 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I have uh, Then, of course, I have the PS4 digital version from the Humble Bundle a while back. I think it was almost a year ago of Resident Evil HD version. Uh, that is the remake of the GameCube. Then, of course, I have uh, on that same Humble Bundle, I got Code Veronica X. So there's that one. Now I have 4. I have 5 and 6 on the PS3. I have 7. Which I've actually haven't never played seven. I actually skipped it entirely and didn't play. It. I played the demo, I think, but never played it. I need to do that after I'm finally done beating Resident Evil Two into the ground. I need to go back and I need to play seven. I still want to beat Kingdom Hearts Three. I don't dislike it, but it's just not. It's not not capturing that spirit that that it used to have. Uh, maybe uh, maybe my mind will change by like when I actually complete the game. And I was having fun with it when I was playing it, but I just had that itch to go back to RE Two. 
be that as it may, I have nothing else for news on this week's episode of the podcast. There's some other stuff. Oh, there's one more thing. One more thing. I don't have a graphic for it. So, there, uh, this whole Epic Game Store uh, thing, this whole saga with them having you know exclusive games and people are getting mad about the launcher being you know, games being exclusive to that launcher, and then of course the Epic Game Store has less features than, than the Steam launcher. It also uh, Epic Games has been accessing your Steam data without your permission. Oopsie. But the Quantic uh, uh, Quantic Dream, uh, if you guys in, like know those guys, those are guys that did Heavy Rain, Detroit, and uh, uh, Beyond Two Souls. Those are coming to PC and exclusive to Epic Game Store. So they are no longer, and I've actually heard this, that they are going to be releasing their games on multiple platforms on the next games going forward because you had three in a row, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit were all PlayStation like second-party games until now. And then, of course, they also did a game called Indigo Prophecy that's really cool that was on the original Xbox and the PS2. Uh, hopefully that game is reverse compatible on the Xbox One. That would be really cool. That was a really neat game. They kind of jumped the shark near the end for me. But starting off, that game was like, that thing gripped me like nothing else. I'm like, what is going on here? But however, there's another game that has been announced as, as exclusive. And at, at least this this is a game that's coming out at the end of the summer. And at least they've announced it months advanced instead of like Metro Exodus. However, The Outer Worlds is going to be a Epic Game Store like exclusive and, uh, of course, that is the game that is being made by the Fallout uh, New Vegas uh, and the original Fallout creators. Uh, but Fallout New Vegas and uh, uh, Kotar, two uh, developers, Obsidian. Of course, they also did South Park Stick of Truth. They've done a lot of stuff. Uh, like, Obsidian is, like, is a great team. But uh, this game is going to be Epic Game Store exclusive as well. Uh, Epic Game Store is sweeping up these games to be exclusive, and some people are not happy about it. Uh, I haven't heard anything uh, <laughs> but people are replying on Twitter. Somebody, uh, basically, uh, re re they replied with a, a thing from New Vegas. So it said, "Vilified for your overwhelmingly monstrous behavior, you become vilified by the community." Uh, and then of course, uh, yeah, my disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. <laughs> Everyone disliked that. Yeah, you're building a terrible future. Yeah, so a bunch of people don't like it. But, you know, I'm not a PC guy. I'm a console guy. So Obsidian also got bought by Microsoft, so this would be the last game that is on. Uh, I mean, I, I, I really shouldn't say that because Microsoft just announced that the Halo Master Chief Collection is coming to the PC and it's coming to Steam. Interesting. But uh, with that being said... I think I'm going to shift it over to myself from the fall and winter of 2015. This video is going to be a little different because I didn't really feel like setting up the old, because the camera that I used in the previous video was my, my wife's photo camera, right? Like taking pictures. This was just a point and shoot uh, camera. So my voice might not be as clear. However, I just set the games up on the table. It's pretty festive because it's around Christmas time. It was on my break and I'm detailing all the games that I bought over the last few months. So, I'm going to kick it on over to myself from the past. Brando, take it away. What's up, everybody? Brando here again with another pickups video. And this time I'm going to do it just a little bit differently. I'm just going to have a table laid out with the games on it because I've got a lot of stuff to go through. And I really don't want to sit down and set everything up. And it's Christmas time, as you can tell, with the uh, table packing here. So, you know what, I just decided just to do it this way, that way you guys can get a good look at what I'm talking about and I'll just, um, you know, just shoot from the hip here and that way I don't have to sit there uncomfortably in front of the camera for hopefully uh, not too long, but if I was going to sit there and babble it probably would have been a lot longer, but uh, these pickups go all the way back and to September, it's been that long since I've done a pickups video, and the first lot here is the... Game Boy Color, Zelda Oracle of Ages. Now I have the manual for both, but unfortunately the person I bought it from didn't have the Oracle of Seasons, so I'm still hunting for that. 
I found it once, but it was in such bad shape you couldn't even tell like what the actual like game was if you didn't know already. It was like you had to like look at it and study it and go, okay, it's red. I can see Zelda. Okay, I know what this is. And you know, I'm trying not to be as picky anymore with sort of the uh, the the quality of what I'm getting, but I at least want it to be legible and I want it to be uh, you know recognizable into what it is. But big thanks to Gretchen for that. Uh, my good buddy Silent Rob's wife hooked me up with that. Going down here for the N64, I got a couple more of those. I got Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, and Zelda uh, Ocarina of Time. I almost said um, Oracle of Time, but that's that's up there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm picking these up. I ended up getting Kazooie and Tui just right around the same time, to be honest with you. So um, I don't know if I picked them up on the same day. I don't, honestly, I don't think I did. I think I got Tui first, and then I went back, and I, they actually had Kazooie. But for uh, Ocarina, it was a game that I have it on the 3DS. I never had it on the on the 64, and I've had Majora's for quite some time. So to find that, and it was a decent price, was was a it was a pretty good deal to find that and get that into my collection. Next year for my birthday, I got a couple games. I got Lego Marvel Super Heroes on the Wii U and Assassin's Creed Rogue. Unfortunately, I haven't played either one of them too much. I did play Marvel uh, Super Heroes on the PS4 at my buddy Rob's house. So that's how I knew I wanted it, and for Assassin's Creed Rogue, well, I haven't played an entry of the series in quite some time. I think I last played, um, I played 4 was the last one on, uh, that I played, and I haven't gotten into Unity or Syndicate or anything like that. But for Rogue, Rogue came out at the, as the same time as Unity, but on the prior consoles. And it's actually tied to the Assassin's Creed 3 and 4, and that sort of like bridges the two uh, storyline-wise. Coming down here... We have uh, Illusion of Gaia. It was awesome to get that in my collection. I let that pass a while ago. I let Rob have it, but I finally have it in my collection. It's a good price. Uh, and Pokemon Red. Honestly, I have never owned Pokemon Red. I have Pokemon Yellow. If I move around the table here. Uh, I have Pokemon Yellow, but I had never owned Pokemon Red. So to get that was pretty cool because that was Red is the first one that I played. I borrowed it from my buddy and, uh, and played it off from him on like the Game Boy um, I think I played it on the original Brick Game Boy. I didn't have a Game Boy Color yet. I got the Game Boy Color when I got Pokemon Yellow, and I just played that version over and over again. But over here, Pokemon Silver. Honestly, I tried Gold and Silver when they came out, and I was not a huge fan. I didn't really get into Gold and Silver until they made the remake. I didn't progress into Pokemon after uh, was it Red, Blue, and Yellow, and so I have Heart Gold. So I went ahead and just picked up the Silver cart here. I got it for. Honestly, not a bad price there for that, and uh, especially when it, it there's another store that was selling it for like double the price. It got for like ten bucks, so good good deal on that. For the GameCube, can't really tell there, but that is on the GameCube Mega Man Anniversary Collection. Picked it up for that, and then I have for the PS2 Ease the Arc of Napishtim. That's a tongue twister there to say that, but that is I think the sixth Ease game. Honestly, I. I have it written down somewhere, that way I know which E's that I'm buying, because they're really weird to buy for it over here, because they renamed them, or this was a remake, a redo of 6 that they re-put onto the PS2, I, honestly, dude, getting into this series is so convoluted, it's really cool to play, but it's just so hard to figure out what the heck you're actually getting into, but I did find that, and honestly, that is the second E's game I've ever seen in my life. And the first one is the one that I bought on the Vita, which I think is a remake of East 4. Next year, I got these games up in Nate's Neck of the Woods, uh, up there, up north. And I got Co-Veronica, Resident Evil on Dreamcast, Silent Hill. That was a big one to get off my list there. And Chrono Cross. Now, I will say, I am not a huge fan of Chrono Cross. I actually, I like Chrono Trigger a whole lot more here. But... You know, I had to get it for my PlayStation collection. I'm a huge PlayStation collector. Uh, I have quite a few games into that collection. And this is a must-have. The PlayStation is an RPG machine. So I'm hoping to be able to kind of play it and, and hopefully like it a little bit more. I, I did play it a little bit back in the day. I rented it, didn't really get into it, and then I bought it on digital. And I think I played it on, like, my PSP or something when, I, when it came out for the PSN. But hopefully I can get into it. Coming up here is some PSP selections. I got Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops Plus, Kills of Liberation. Coming down, Metal Gear Acid 1 and 2. Now, interestingly enough, I found Metal Gear Acid 2 first, and that's kind of the more difficult one to find. I found it up there with those other games I showed you that I got up in Nate's Neck of the Woods. 
and I bought it up there for a you know a little bit more than I wanted to spend, but I never see it, and I'll be damned if like two weeks later I did not find the first Metagor Acid for like a fraction of that price. It was it's crazy the price difference between one and two here, but they, it just people didn't know what they were buying when they bought their PSPs. They got the first Metagor Acid, and they it sold a lot, right? They didn't really know what they were getting. It was more of a puzzler, more of a kind of a tactics game, and then. So them selling all the all those copies kind of warranted to making a sequel, but the, the sequel didn't sell quite as many. Coming down, Final Fantasy 1 and 2. Awesome to get these finally. And then I got the original Dissidia, which I owned digitally on the PSP Go. Yes, I said that. PSP Go. I am ashamed. Trust me. Still living that one, uh, still living that one down. But I have a Duodecim. I finally picked up the the original for a couple bucks. And the same thing for those uh, Final Fantasies. Interesting enough, for these two Final Fantasies here, they they actually kind of screwed me over because I brought Final Fantasy 2 and 1. I brought the cases up there, and he said, I can't find Final Fantasy 1. I'm like, or no, he couldn't find Final Fantasy 2. So I, I went back to find another game, which ended up being uh, Killzone. But then I found another Final Fantasy 2 case, and I'm like, well, if they don't have any, I don't want anybody else to get gypped like I was just going to get gypped. So... I brought it up. I said, here, I found this out there. Don't know, maybe if you, if you can find that one. He found that one, sent me home, and I'm testing them out, right? So he found Final Fantasy 2. Final Fantasy 2 was in both of these cases. That guy forgot to put the original Final Fantasy in, in the first case, and then put both Final Fantasy 2s. And I'm guessing because the, the art is similar, even the, even though like the colors are off, or the guy just kind of got confused. And, you know, I'll catch him a break, you know. I went back, and they made it right, so... That worked out pretty good. Coming down here, Donkey Kong Country. Who didn't love this freaking game when they were a kid, man? I never did really play like the uh, like the sequels, two or three, but that original one, I played the heck out of. Also, another game I played the heck out of, Turtles and freaking Time. I got this game, and I sat there and was testing it out, and almost like I think I got more than halfway through just in one setting because I just I love this game. It didn't take that really long to beat. Uh, I used to play the crap out of it. I never owned it, though. I always had to borrow it from like, my buddies or something to play it, but I got it now. And you know what? I'm really starting to like get pretty happy with where I am in my collection for some of this stuff, and it's going to get to the point where I'm just looking for more hard-to-find stuff. And uh, you know, stuff like this is not going to come as often. That's why I'm sort of like putting like a stop at making these videos as often. Coming up here for the NES, uh, The Simpsons. Was it Bart versus the Space Mutants? I remember Preston having that, playing that, and having a blast. The Adventures of Bayou Billy. Now, the only reason I have this is because I have the manual, and I've seen the, uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd video on it, and I, I, it was a few bucks, so I said, why not? And then over here, I have the original Ninja Turtles. I have the second one, so now I just need to get the Manhattan uh, Project. I think that's what it's called. Over here, Diddy Kong Racing. Again, man, I'm getting pretty close to being kind of done with my Institute 4 collecting. I'm very happy with where I'm at. I have the games I really want the most. I'm not going for anything complete here, so, you know, there's only a few that I can really think of off the top of my head. Maybe, like, the first Turok. Maybe Pilot Wings, even though that's not really all that great. You know, maybe Conkers if I can come across it again. But, yeah, I'm getting pretty happy with where there's with where I'm at for the N64. Coming down here for the Wii U, the Wonderful 101, and Super Mario Maker. Wonderful 101, man. You know what, I downloaded the demo, wasn't really too sure about it. When I tested it out after I bought it, I'm liking it, man. It's kind of different and really neat, but Super Mario Maker, that's where it's at. That This game is freaking awesome. I'm having so much fun with it. It's probably my game of the year, to be honest with you. Even though I played a lot of really cool games, the retro guy in me, I might have to give it to Mario Maker. I don't know. I haven't played Tomb Raider, the Rise of the Tomb Raider. I haven't played that one yet, but you know what? Mario Maker might just be enough to edge that out, man. This is a really cool thing for them to put out, and unfortunately, it wasn't enough to save the Wii U. Um, you know, it's not really going to do much, but more Wii U stuff here. I have Shovel Knight in The Legend of K. Now, Shovel Knight was a indie game that got a physical release, and I didn't play it until I got the physical release. Just saying, I like physical content, and if they never came out with a physical release, I was going to get it eventually, maybe on like a flash sale or something, but... Legend of K was something I never heard of until I saw it on YouTube, and I think it's a remake of a PS2 game. I think it was like maybe a Kickstarter of some sorts, because it's a Wii U entry, but it has like a normal Wii white case. So I found that at my uh, at the like local Walmart for 20 bucks. I don't know if that if they're supposed to get it. I don't know if uh, 
what, of what retailers actually got it, but I saw it after seeing it on YouTube and just jumped on it and picked it up. Now, the last three here, I got the Lego Batman Trilogy, and basically, the reason why I picked these up is because I'm trying to collect some of the uh, Lego games, and I decided to get them for the Wii and Wii U, just to kind of buff out that collection a little bit and get some more games for that. I did play the first and second one. I, we bought them for my nephew on, like, the DS, and I was testing them out, and just, I was having so much fun with them, I'm like, I'm going to have to get these at some point, so... I figured now's a good time. They were a pretty decent price. The prices are actually kind of going low on them, so... I'm gonna actually going to cut this, reset the table, because I got, like, another full table of games to show you, so I will be right back. Okay, we are back with a whole new table setup. I have that many games I had to actually enter the table and refill it. So, the first one here, Kirby's Return to Dreamland on the Wii, and then the next two, Metroid Trilogy, Metroid Prime Trilogy, Super Mario Galaxy 2. Now, these three Wii games were at GameStop buy, buy two, get one free. I stopped and I looked to see if there's anything of note in there, and there were a few. So I looked at it, decided to you know pay the price. Some of these are kind of going for you know some expensive bucks. Kind of hard to find this stuff like for a decent price on the used market, especially like on Craigslist or anything like that. I don't really check Craigslist that often. I don't really like dealing with Craigslist. But I get home and I'm excited, man. And that's the only game that's in the actual case, the disc. These two are empty. So I had to go back and get the discs. So, But they were really cool about it. I called them right when I got home and said, look, you guys forgot to give me some discs. They checked into it. They said, yeah, you're right. We'll, help. we'll have it sitting here, and you guys can just pick it up when you come back. And I went in the next day after work and just got my games. So that was kind of cool. Paid off there. Three... PSP games, more added here, and this is, these are from like my big Christmas shopping spree that I did. Um, so Monster Hunter 2 Freedom, Tokobot, and then without a case, Persona 2. I went ahead and picked that up because it was a decent price. I had a case, but I can't find a label to print for it, and even though I would like to pay for a full case, I probably would just print it out. It doesn't really matter to me that much as long as it looks decent on it, on like a shelf or something. But Tokobot. I want to talk about Tokobot, and the thing about Tokobot is, I actually have Tokobot on the PS2, Tokobot Plus. I found it at Goodwill, sealed, if you can believe that. It was still sealed, and I found that on the PSP for like a dollar, and went, you know what, I'm going to buy this, that way I can actually try the game and play it, because I just left Tokobot Plus sealed. I didn't even know what it was, but I'm like, a sealed PS2 game, and it looks kind of anime-ish, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it sealed, see, you know, see what happens with that. Who knows, maybe one day it'll become really uh, rare, and... Maybe expensive, or maybe it won't, so so there's that. PS1, Tekken 2. Uh, I tried to buy Tekken 2 months ago, maybe even over a year ago. Bought Tekken 1 and Tekken 2. And same story as the Final Fantasy story that I shared with you, but on the PSP, they put two copies of the original Tekken in the, in the uh, cases, and when they looked, they couldn't find Tekken 2 anywhere. They didn't even have it, so I didn't even get to buy it that day. I played the crap out of this in like the arcade, so really happy to have that. Coming down here for the PS3, Final Fantasy 13 2, Lightning Returns, 13 3 technically, I guess, and Castlevania, Lords of Shadow. All really great games. I haven't really played 13 that much. I tried to get into it, and it really didn't sink me, but I had to get the other ones just for uh, completionist's sake. Hopefully, maybe one day I could sit down, play all three of them, and maybe it'll click. Who knows, right? Sometimes these things take time. I know for a while it took me a long time to get into, like, uh, like Dragon Quest VIII, so... I mean, it took me over 10 years to get even try to get into that after I played it the first time. Coming up here, found Bioshock 2 and Bioshock Infinite for like two bucks a piece. That was a really good deal. I don't have the first one yet. Uh, they didn't have it. I, I looked for it. But I'm really looking at like, like diving into those. So I've heard the second one is not that great, but Infinite is fantastic. So I tried them, tried playing them, and they look fun, look interesting. Coming down here, The Bouncer for PS2. Who remembers that game as like a launch title, man? I played the crap out of that. I, I remember beating it in like 45 minutes, though. You guys remember that game being that short? Uh, you can play it like two-player or something like that. I remember playing it with my pal Jason, and we just had a blast with that game. I remember we I spent the night, and we played that game. I guess if you beat it three times, the, the last boss was like an alternate outfit, and we got that in like about an hour and a half. It was crazy. And then Rogue Galaxy. Really interesting. I heard a lot of cool stuff about this, and this has just come to the PS4 with their uh, PS2 initiative to try and, like, get newer games or older games with, like, trophy support. 
and I ended up finding this out in the wild for about almost the same price as, as it's going for on the PS4. And you know what? I like it. It was kind of neat. I was not expecting that kind of gameplay out of that. So really cool to check that one out. Coming down here, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles on the GameCube. I only played this, was it in a store? Like, like an EB Games or something? I tried it out and I didn't end up buying it. And now I have it because it was pretty cheap. And then Fable, the Lost Chapters, for a dollar, if you can believe that, for a dollar. I couldn't say no to that one either. Coming down here, Crimson Skies, the High Road to Revenge. Original Xbox exclusive. Now, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you guys ever heard of this before. Microsoft Company Store Purchase, not to be sold, purchased by blank, right employee number. And down here it says not for resale. I found this at my local disc replay for like two bucks. And I thought that big Microsoft sticker was just a GameStop sticker, you know, trade it, you know, buy it, play it, trade it, you know, the old stickers that you still find on some of the games that you're, that you're looking for, especially on the PS2, Xbox, GameCube era, back before they sort of like went uh, limiting on their stickers for just the pre-owned stuff. They would just put so many stickers on that damn thing. And it's been a real pain in the ass to try and clean them up when you buy them, but I almost skipped over it until I like actually read it and that really took me back. I was not expecting to find that in like nowhere Indiana. So pretty cool to see that. If you guys have ever seen this before anywhere else, please let me know because that is kind of, uh, I thought it was a neat find, especially so far away from a company store. In fact, I don't even know where one is. I think there's one in Seattle, but the Game Boy Advance player. Obviously there's just a disc. I do have the unit hooked up to my GameCube already. Otherwise I have it sitting here. I didn't really feel like unhooking it. I just had the disc. You know, you guys trust me, right? I have it. That was pretty cool to check that out. Um, honestly, it was a, I want to complete my GameCube type thing. It wasn't something that I really needed. I have ways to play my Game Boys, uh, my Game Boy, uh, original Game Boy and Game Boy Advance on the TV. I have uh, cartridges for those on the Super Nintendo. So this is almost just like a, you know what? I have the money, I might as well pick it up. So yeah, there's that. Up here, I have Super C and Ghosts and Goblins, NES games. I'm really rounding out some of my original NES titles. You know, there's a lot of guys that try to go for a complete set. I'm not that guy. There's only a few games uh, that I'm really thinking of. I need to get like the Mega Man's. I need to get Castlevania's uh, 1 and 3, and maybe a few more. Like, maybe like the original Contra and something like that. So honestly, I'm getting to the end of where I want to be for the NES stuff. Maybe I'll pick some more stuff as I kind of go along, but for right, to, but to find these two uh, out there were pretty, you know, was pretty neat. Coming down here, Meta Gear Solid Snake Eater 3D. Now, I saw this, it was about a year ago, and I went back to pick it up and it was gone. So to find this now, the price has gone up on it just a little bit. Honestly, I wish I had the circle pad. <laughs> I tried playing it, it's a little weird. But I'm happy to have it and to try and like, you know, round off my my uh, Metal Gear Solid collection. Down there without a case is Dragon Quest V. Maybe you can zoom in on it. Can you focus? Focus? Oh well, you guys can see what it is, right? Hopefully. Dragon Quest V, don't have a, don't have a case for it. I have extra cases, but I don't have like the label the, to, to print it off. In fact, I, I found the label, but I don't have the ink. So there's that. That's why I didn't put a case with that one. Down here, some Dreamcast stuff. Silent Scope, Power Stone. Power Stone, I remember playing. I played Silent Scope in the arcade. Power Stone is a fun, niche little fighter. Pretty neat to have. Again, my my Dreamcast collection is like very wimpy. I don't really have a whole lot of games. There's not really a whole lot that... After I started collecting for it, I'm like, you know what? There's kind of a handful, really, that I really like have a strong desire to have. But I had to get Power Stone and Silent Scope is only a few bucks. Now, this next one for the Dreamcast, I got lucky because they re, uh, restocked it on the watermelon, and that is Pure Solar. Now this game came out for the Sega Genesis in 2010, and they put it onto HD uh, in 2015, I think it was the PS4 and the Wii U, I think it's on Steam, it might be on Xbox One as well. But yeah, they also released a physical copy for the Dreamcast, and I had to pick it up, and I missed the Kickstarter for it, man, I, I was kicking myself, but I never had the money when that was coming, uh, coming across, but I, I read that they restocked it, I went and paid the price. I wanted it so bad because, man, they really hooked you up. They got like a poster here. The discs look exactly like original Dreamcast discs. Now, this isn't a, uh, what is it, a GD-ROM. 
like what they have for the Dreamcast. This is actually just a CD-ROM, but it works just the same. And they hook you, and it, it looks fantastic. I was floored when I actually saw the actual quality. And it apparently has some sort of mini game for the VMU. Seriously, they went all out for that. I'm really blown away with how far they went to make the Dreamcast collectors happy. And I'm happy to have it in my collection. And that is my massive pickups from September to Christmas. And I hope you guys had a really Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate. I hope you had a good one. I'm Brando, and I will see you later. And I am back. Thank you guys so much for joining me this week on the podcast. Of course, we have adjusted our release schedule right now due to the everything that's been going on in the personal lives, the medical stuff, as I detailed earlier. You know, we are we have some episodes in the bank, some cool retrospective episodes that we're bringing to you. I will be doing some live stuff. I'll be trying to do some more social media stuff to stay engaged with each and every one of you, which, of course, you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Game Addicts Play for all of our social media stuff. Stay, you know, stay in tune with what we're doing. I'm trying to post there as much as I can. And then, of course, check out the podcast when, you know, every other Wednesday, uh, a live stream here on Twitch and on our, on our Facebook channel. You know, we go live when we go live so we can interact with you guys. If I can, I will read the comments. If I don't, I will get to them near the end of the show if that's possible. And then, of course, the audio version drops the next day on Thursdays on, you know, for all of you audio guys. They want your podcast on your phone, all that cool stuff that's up there. And it gets released on there. If they're not, if we're not on your favorite one, please let me know. That way, I can make it so. And then on Fridays, the the live stream video that goes out to Twitch and on Facebook, that goes up on our YouTube channel. Of course, the YouTube channel is a pretty much catch all. You get the audio and video versions of the show, and of course, all of the gaming videos that we've done, either complete or otherwise, uh, as far as series uh, going on over there. You could check that out as well, guys. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. Again, I've been Brando from Mike. Thank you guys so much. Game on. Have a good one, guys. Until next time.